We're about to get started. Sorry for the technical difficulties, so you can't see my face, but it's not as pretty as Nikhil's, so we'll have to deal with just his. Here we go. Awesome. Welcome, Nikhil. Let me kill the music here and let you get started. Hey, thank you. All right. It's an absolute pleasure to be here to talk to you guys about Cronon. So Cronon is a data platform we've built for machine learning and AI workloads at Airbnb and Stripe. So a little bit of background about me. Uh, I, until two months ago, was supporting a few teams in ML Infra at Airbnb, feature platform, embedding platform, RAG, and ML observability on the teams that I was supporting there. Before that, I was uh, I was a second engineer on the stream processing team at Meta. And before that, I was essentially an ML engineer before that title existed. I was embedded with research scientists who were improving content quality of item pages in Amazon and Walmart. And most recently, I co-founded a company called Zipline, which makes it easy for people to generate production-grade ML systems. All right, so Cronon is used very widely uh, at Airbnb for many kinds of use cases. So ranking for content ranking and uh, search ranking for account fraud and payments fraud for all kinds of customer support use cases and marketing technology type stuff. And more interestingly, also some non ML use cases like rule, rule engines or metrics. So the impact of Cronon has been uh, pretty far and wide at Airbnb. We went from using 3,000 features to close to 30,000 features in about three years. Um, and as a result, not only the number of models that were built increased, but also the number, the number of features that got used in each of these models also increased. Right? And as a result, the ML systems are faster to build and out of the box, more scalable and performant. And more importantly, uh, practitioners are independent, more or less. So a data scientist typically had to work with a team of systems engineers to bring this ML system online. And even though pro the prototyping phase took only a couple of weeks or a month, the ML system building uh, phase took many, many months or even a year with a large team of systems engineers. So that's no longer the case. And uh, we also open sourced Cronon a couple of months ago. It's battle tested at Airbnb and Stripe. You can use a QR code here or like go to the link uh, to check out the product for yourself. So I'm going to walk through uh, how Cronon operates with a simple example. Um, it's a chatbot, but it's, you can imagine it being a regular traditional ML system too. So let's say we're building a chatbot for a uh, e-commerce website and the item uh, of a particular user didn't arrive and the user wants to talk to the chatbot and understand what's going on. So um, if you just pass in the user question into the LLM, the LLM uh, cannot help, usually cannot help with the issue. So what we need to do here is uh, enrich the prompt with more context. So one example is to uh, get a sense of the percentage of issues with this merchant recently. Right. So let's say we want to build that uh, metric, which is the uh, percentage of issues of the orders of this merchant in the last week. We basically need to, uh, so the default way of doing this, the quick and dirty way of doing this is just hitting the production databases. So if there is an orders table and issues table in the database, we just run some SQL on it and get a count and divide them and get this percentage out. But this stops scaling really fast because there are usually merchants with a large number of orders and doing this range scan stops scaling very fast. Right, so everything becomes problematic if the range scan is problematic. The scalable way of doing this is 
very involved, but the idea behind the scalable way of doing this is pre-aggregation. So instead of reading raw order information on every request, we are going to read uh, the counts directly. So to build such a system, we need two kinds of pipeline. Uh, the first one is a batch pipeline that looks at all the historical orders and creates a count out of it using something like Spark maybe, and a streaming uh, system, which is reading data from uh, Flink, but like looking at the most recent data and creating a new count for today and storing all of that together in a key value store, such as Dynamo. And then there is a service that is supplying all of this information to the ML service or to the prompt. And to orchestrate all of this, you know, you need to like, use something like Airflow, and to monitor, you need to use something like Grafana. So it's a simple metric, but as you can see, the amount of infrastructure you need to support this is pretty massive. Right. Let's take another example. It's slightly different, which is to find similar issues to uh, this current issue. And this is a retrieval problem. So to find similar issues, we need to look at all the issues of all users and find the most relevant uh, issues and then pass it on to the prompt. And this also follows a similar story, but the biggest difference is that now we are generating embeddings. Generate embeddings we need to call out into some VLLM if you want to deploy your own model, or you can call out to a vendor such as uh, OpenAI to generate embeddings. And finally, you need to store a vector store. Uh, something like that. And again, a service that pulls this information out and supplies this to the ML service or the prompt. And again, Airflow and Grafana for orchestration and monitoring. So, and this is just two um, elements of the prompt and there can be more elements. So you can think of uh, similarly measuring item issue percentage or uh, issue with the delivery person, or um, you can think of enriching the context with uh, relevant policy documents for that geographical area and for that market or for that item category. Right. So once you have all of these uh, elements in the prompt, the infrastructure needed to uh, support all of these elements is becomes super uh, difficult to build. So it's it's a multiplication of infrastructure components. And finally, that results in frustration and like a long time for users to build these systems. So even though like the Latin notebook is easy to read, quick to build, when it comes to deploying this in production, it's just super painful uh, for a single data scientist to manage. And even if there's a team of like four or five systems engineers, it's just a huge, huge system to hand build. Right. So how do these challenges materialize? Um, one big symptom that we have noticed is uh, people simply don't use enough data in their models or in their prompts. So the context is not as powerful and the model is not as good with its responses. Right. And the other symptom is, you know, it's, as I said, it's very easy to uh, build a prototype and you throw it over the wall to MLEs and software engineers. And it takes a long, long time for anyone to build this system, right? So this is the main reason behind uh, founding this company and building the Cronon project, which is to make the, so we uh, want the ML system to be generated, not hand built. That, that's the main goal of both the Opus project and the company. So what that means is, um, from a user point of view, they're defining their computation over their raw data. We generate the infra, and users use that to train models and evaluate these and iterate on them quickly. And finally, we expose production endpoints that serve applications. So from a user experience point of view, it looks like they have written some Python code and they're able to like get to this production endpoints without any intermediate team that is building systems. All right, so that's 
uh, my entire presentation. And uh, you know, any questions, feedback, requests are all welcome. You can also reach out to me on this email address. Awesome, thank you so much. I didn't see any questions come through in the chat, but uh, maybe just as a last question, since we have a few minutes, you know, how would you compare or contrast uh, this the chronon with like a comparator? Like, what what would you com What is the closest comparator to this, and you know, what are the differences? Yeah, so if this is a broad area, roughly there is like five categories or five boxes, and there is uh, comparators in each of these boxes. One is the offline training data generation and offline model training is the second box. And the third box is uh, featured serving and uh, mo uh, model serving. Those are like the other two boxes. And the uh, final boxes are like observability and uh, orchestration. So in each of these boxes, there are many vendors. And uh, um, so like, for example, for offline training data generation, people just use Databricks or Snowflake, or like write Hive pipelines. And for online feature serving, they use systems like Tecton or Fennel, etc. And for model training and serving, you know, they use something like Vertex AI or SageMaker. And for monitoring, there are vendors like Arise and uh, Fiddler, I think. And for orchestration, there is like many orchestration vendors. I'm, I'm just naming a few, but they all like address different areas of the uh, or different pieces of the puzzle. Our approach is slightly different. We think there are really good open source projects that um, solve each of these things really well. We want to instead make it easy for people to deploy these open source projects and like use them to generate infra seamlessly awesome. i don't know if that answered the question but the, the yeah yeah great. no that's great cool we're at time but uh really appreciate you coming by and sharing everything um awesome thank you for having me yes